Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Evening Queue. This is yours truly, the host of the show, Miles Wolf. How y'all doing? Great. Good. I didn't hear you. Anyway, this is just a promotional shout out just before we get into the episode for another podcast on the scene named Space Cloud E, where the E is actually silent. So it's pretty much just Space Cloud. Anyway, this is an installment series where they combine improvisational elements with sketch comedy, discussions, and character rants on their favorite characters from movies. Do be sure to check out this podcast, give them a like, listen to all their episodes. They got great some great stuff. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. So is there anyone to cue the music right now? Anyone? Oh, great. I'll just do it myself. Cue the music in three, two, one, now. Coming all the way from Canada. You done traveling all the world. Let's bring to you right here this rap. Live from Key Dot. From the 416. You know how we do. Up north. All righty, welcome back to the Evening Queue. This is Misha, Peter Zach, filling in for Miles Wolf. Uh, Miles has been away for a long time now, um, so Misha has been filling in. He's been sick with COVID, so Misha is here for you to deliver to you this episode. I know it's been a while since we've been on the air. Um, I've been doing other crap with my life, but um, we're finally back. We got a new guest on the show today and we're gonna we got a great um episode lined up so i'm misha and my guest his name is matthias there you go i sell oranges he sells oranges do you i didn't even know that about you yeah off the highway pretty good business you'd be surprised oh really even in canada (laughs) even in canada yeah man even in the winter oh fuck yeah even people feel more sorry for you they're willing to get out and actually pay you and buy oranges yeah <laughs> yeah surprisingly pays the most in the winter oh really yeah. oh man you got to tell me where where you uh where you set up shop man and then i'll drive by in my car yes yeah, support yeah support local business right that's what Fuck it's all yeah. about yeah oh that's cool man well um yeah tell uh yeah so matthias is uh is my friend here in Toronto, and uh, we've been planning this episode, or we, we've been wanting to do this epi- an episode for a while, for right? For a while, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you've been, like, bouncing around, going to Poland, going to, mm. now you're going to the States, so uh, it's glad to actually do it. Quite exciting. I know. I always used to do, like, creative shit like this back in high school, and I mean, I still used to play guitar and do other things, but this is mm. exciting. Yeah? This is quite nice. Did you, did you ever, did, I can't remember, did you ever record, uh, like, music? Like your yeah. guitar music and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I had um, a, a three-song EP that came out. It's like a Queen's University website. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was the only time I actually recorded like three songs mm. with like a producer there and everything. It was pretty cool. Yo, is it a, is it on Spotify or something? No, no, it's not on Spotify. It's on the Queen's University uh, band um, oh. page, and it's up there. I don't think I ever managed to get it to Spotify or anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is, is it still there? When... Yeah, man. Dude, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Later. Yeah, it's pretty sappy shit. But like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, at that time, I was going through a lot of a lot of stuff. So, uh, yeah, the music definitely reflects the moment. But, but yeah, I've been like working on those songs for so long, and it was just like about time that you know I actually got recorded it, and you know, I actually heard myself and actually like finalized it. Well, because that's that's where uh, a lot of music is uh, is written, right? From the heart, man. From personal experiences, yeah, dude. Right? From the pain, the suffering. I mean, I that's like most songs, anyways. I mean, uh, like, uh, did you do drugs while while you uh, while you were uh, were writing the songs? Because like, how, oh yeah. How, how do you how do you think like the those classic bands like Motley Crue or oh the more drugs or, uh, the better? Yeah, because that it releases all the ideas out of your brain, man. Yeah, right? dude. Uh, specifically, the most important part about drugs. <laughs> is a uh, alternate perspective true and that is literally priceless and that's why um you know i mean i'm not gonna say people that do drugs are successful but because a lot of them actually are quite the opposite but <laughs> yeah. when when you do drugs and you do know how to you know keep balance yourself mm. um you, you can use it to your advantage to see things from a different perspective um and you know everything sounds different you see things different so when you're writing and you're 
you're playing it's 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 a different experience so you can make it sound unique and you can come from a different angle mm, mm. Um, which is important so yeah to answer your question yeah i did a drugs dude that's cool man yeah that's cool because yeah i know i know i know from my my experiences right when uh whenever i i was on uh mushrooms right as an example <laughs> you know that one uh yeah I, I'm, I'm okay with, i'm okay with disclosing that i don't care let's uh, <laughs> yeah it's uh i i just felt like i had the best ideas that i just never knew i had in my mind unfortunately you know i realized you probably should like write them down in some form uh so you don't forget them right the, the ideas that go through your head yeah oh yeah 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 right so uh yeah if that comes out in in writing music then that's uh and that's great. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate what kind of mushrooms they are? These aren't like shiitakes or cremini's or some shit. Like, what kind of, what uh, kind of fucking mushrooms are you eating over here? Oh, uh, you know the ones that you get from Loblaws or yeah, something. You know, <laughs> you find them close to cow shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those ones, they eh? the good ones. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh... I used to have a friend that used to pick fucking mushrooms, dude, off the ground. Oh, really? That was savage. I swear, he never read a mushroom book in his life, but like. He had the confidence to know and distinguish between these mushrooms. And he, really? hey, this is back in Brampton. This guy yeah. would just walk around and pick mushrooms off of people's lawns, dude. <laughs> I remember him knocking my door and he had a little Ziploc full of little mushrooms. He's like, yo, dude, these grow on your lawn. I'm like, what the fuck are those? They're just like a little bag of mushrooms. He's like, no, man, these are the ones. These are the magic mushrooms. <laughs> and, I mean, they specifically grow beside, you know, turds, but... Mm. I guess uh, when the climate's right, and I guess I don't know how they spread, maybe with like spores or some kind of shit, but they can also grow where there isn't cow shit. And there was actually quite a lot in Brampton of these little magic mushrooms because there's also a lot of farms there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Now mushrooms are great, dude. Yeah. Oh, excellent. That was a nice little intro for uh, <clears throat> for this episode. I like that, dude. I mean, you know, we, we could just we could just talk about drugs the whole time here. I mean, yeah, forget, forget what the hell I had planned here. I mean. Uh, I even had salvia divinorum. Have you ever had that? What's that? Uh, that's like incense for your house. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, but it's very well known if you actually smoke it. Um, it's extremely potent, and it, it almost feels like you know a hundred times, uh, more potent than weed. Yeah. And it is almost like it feels almost somewhat like a psychedelic, but the thing is, it only lasts like ten minutes or something. But this is in the incense for your house. You can. Uh well yeah it's called salvia. And, oh and... salvia okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah oh I, no I, I have heard of that one yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. can get in like your convenience store or something yeah yeah you know back in the day when your dealer was too busy jerking his gherkin and you could <laughs> you're like you know I still want to get something yeah I can't buy alcohol so you just go to the convenience store and get yourself some is, salvia is is it true I I think the rumor that I heard about that one um because I've never done it is like the 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 trip that you have feels like forever but it only la it's only like 20 minutes or something no that's dmt that's dmt yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. i've never had that okay no but the salvia is still fucking wild dude yeah yeah i, I had it back when uh, my dealer obviously didn't come with the weed and i'm like nah i'm getting a buzz today so <laughs> i went to the convenience store my friend was talking about salvia and uh i ended up smoking this thing and mm. was in the trails and i was with my boy and there's somebody cutting their grass outside and all of a sudden that lawnmower just starts getting louder and louder and louder. And then the ground starts shaking around me. I start panicking. Now I look behind me and fucking, I kid you not, there was a triceratops running <laughs> towards me, but not getting any closer. Yeah. It was just kind of running in place in the distance while all the ground was shaking. And I just saw fucking kids running around and I start yelling to my friends, hide the fucking kids, get off the road. I'm just seeing this dinosaur run in place trying to come at like <laughs> going to trample us all, man. So I just went behind the rock hit. And then by that time, like it was over. Wow. I, so, yeah. I think, I think, I think, uh, I think you told me this story like, like years ago. Um, I, when you and me and Jeremy were, were talking about it, you, you described this, um, this experience that sounds familiar, but sounds wild though. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I've told it before. Yeah, that is a crazy experience. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, um, I guess uh, what do we? Do? Where do we go from here? Remember, remember what the topic I had in mind was? Yeah, yeah, uh, new beginnings. Yeah, so I guess I don't know. No transition. We just get into it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like you know this would be a perfect topic for for you and I to to talk about a little because uh, I feel like yeah we've both had. 
both had uh, a lot of new beginnings and change in our life in the last couple of years. And I think, you know, some of that has come from, uh, you know, the pandemic, obviously, has just kind of instigated some of that. But uh, yeah. sometimes it, I think the pandemic, what it's done for people, I don't know if it's done for you, but is kind of makes you reevaluate certain things in your life and, um, you know, yeah. ma- you make a change based based on it. So I think, you know, for me, what I want to know is, uh, you know, how uh, a new beginning for you, I think, was uh, buying a new house. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah how, that was huge. Yeah. How was, how was that for you? How, how, how did that feel? What, what was going through your head? Um, <laughs> well, before I moved in, it was quite exciting mm. until I actually moved in. Then it was a, it's a completely new thing, right? Because, mm. I mean, ultimately, we're just constantly seeking problems and ways to solve them. So as soon as, you know you have a challenge and you complete it it only lasts so long until you're back on the grind and back looking at ways to solve more problems yeah. so um yeah i mean i'll take it for granted i was super excited to get the house but also this house was the cheapest house in toronto that we could find right right because i really wanted to live in toronto that was a big deal for me of course yeah. um and it was also by eglinton right you got that ttc building now at this mm. point there's like fucking 20 condos coming up in my neighborhood it's ridiculous oh, really? actually oh yeah it had a lot to do with the uh, appreciation as well right because the location we picked out was pretty prime but anyways like mm. the house is really old there's a lot of work and i didn't really know how much work ha- that you had to put into it yeah not to mention the frustration right because like i'm also doing a lot of this stuff myself yeah so yeah. i also have to live through like the learning of it then the fucking up of it and mm. then the fixing my fuck ups of it and then like it's a lot man it, it was a lot but i think it's rewarding i'm almost done the basement at this point so the upstairs is all renovated yeah and the downstairs is almost finished at this point um huge backyard i got like fucking almost like 15 trees on my property maybe like six at the front and a bunch of bunch at the back too so it's really nice Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you can get real creative with it. I, I'm always thinking of new things to to do with it. To be honest, well, I mean, I I would assume like you know if you have you have a basement and you're uh, working on finishing it, you know that could be an opportunity for uh, you know making a basement unit for someone to rent out or something, right? And uh, yeah. I could I could help pay your rent in in this or your uh, mortgage at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, you could you could definitely do that. You can. You can be really creative, man, with this. Um, in Toronto, um, if it's your primary home residence, you can even Airbnb it for half the year. And, oh, yeah. Uh, even that would still be enough to pay your mortgage and profit. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but, but you'd have to, you know, take a bigger risk. You'd have to get even more creative with it. You know, it mm-hmm. has to be furnished. Yeah. Um, and you, you got to really focus on the details and stuff. So there's, de- like really depends on how, how much risk are you willing to take and how much work are you willing to do because there's so many ways of, of of doing that yeah you can rent the basement or you can rent the whole house as a whole unit or you can airbnb it mm. um yeah all kind all kinds of stuff man like we even drove up north um to uh one of our friends was like uh, doing an art project and there's this guy who just lives on a house with a big land and he just rents his land out for people filming specifically ah. people that film stuff so it's like there's Good so idea. many ways to uh monetize your property it's actually it's insane you can rent your if you have a pool you can rent your pool oh yeah there's an app for that now oh, really yeah dude because like you know five or, or you know five or six years ago you know having a pool didn't really add any value yeah to your house i, I think it was just like a nice selling point if yeah, anybody exactly. does like a pool but some sense that also comes with more maintenance costs and a lot of other problems but it's not like it would add any value today you have a pool it actually adds value to your home because because the like the the pool renting is that just for like uh like just people wanting to have a party or, or something yeah, or whoever just, wants to just hey you know i want to go for a swim just go for a swim and i mean i'd rather walk down the street to this guy renting his pool than to i don't know take a two buses to this community center or something <laughs> like that yeah right plus like you, you also get that uh, private experience if you rent someone's pool you can just it's just you mm. right um so definitely I, unique i know my, my my uncle um you know lives in vancouver still and he's actually in the film industry right over there because uh a lot of uh 
for those of you who don't know, a lot of uh, American films or Hollywood movies are actually filmed in Canada because it's cheaper. They get a tax break yeah. and everything. So there's a lot of jobs in the film industry. Yeah. Um, out uh, Vancouver, Toronto are pretty much the main two. But uh, he, my uncle was telling me actually that um, you can actually – I can't remember where you put it out, like on some website or something, but um, for your vehicle – you can rent out to like film to film sets, so your vehicle can be a prop, like in like a you know like a, a scene that's like sh- shooting a, down a street or something, like an really? outdoor scene or something. How do you apply for this stuff? Where I do you even find this. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a lot of it's kind of just word word of mouth, and like someone tells right. you like uh, about it, but like th- th- there's got there's 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 some uh, something online where you like on some site where you post it, and uh, cool. And uh, yeah, he said because you know. Film uh, crews are always looking for, you know, um, things to make the, I don't know, the scene more look more natural, right? And yeah. uh, as, as especially with us, you know, in our family, we have uh, a couple Land Rovers as an example, and uh, Land Rovers are good, uh, you know, um, car props to go with like mountain scenes and everything, yep. all that stuff. So it kind of works well like that. So yeah, I guess uh, monetizing your, you know, your property, whether it's physical property or, uh, you know, like like land or personal property like cars you know or your pool um yeah and there's a lot of opportunities there you're right but um yeah i know that that uh new house i know is a big a big uh new beginning for you um what about uh did that affect your affect uh kind of your plans to travel a little bit i don't know if you had any uh aspirations to go some some places i mean because I know, I know, like uh, you know, a house is probably one of the biggest financial commitments people can make, right? Yeah. Um, did that? Uh, I guess I don't want to. I don't know. Want want to ask? Like, were you, you having doubts about it? Like right after you you made the oh fuck yeah, the, as soon as I, yeah, as soon as we bought the house, I had doubts. I was like, what the fuck am I doing right now? Because mm. yeah. like I've never owned a house. I don't know what it's like. Mm. I, I mean, I know somewhat from my parents owning a house, but at the same time, like, you know, you're mm. a kid and you're young, you're not really paying attention. you just like, mm. yeah, I just got to shovel the driveway and cut the grass. <laughs> but no, it's a lot more than that, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on with it. And uh, yeah, dude, but like, yeah, just moving into an old house with this idea of renovating, it's just a lot, man. I just remember there was like water damage inside the one of the closets. So while I'm there demoing the drywall and trying to get everything out so i can fix the water that was coming from uh from the exterior wall Mm. i ended up cutting a hole in the ceiling and obviously i didn't take the time to even think that you know oh there's insulation on top of this ceiling right because that's how they they do they just put blown in insulation and it just lays on top of this uh, of the drywall on the ceiling and as soon as i cut that hole all that insulation fell on my face my eyes like my <laughs> mouth my whole body yeah and i remember as soon as that happened i just i was like i regret this <laughs> what did i get myself into like there are so many things there's so many things behind these walls i don't even know about yeah like there's so many things i gotta learn to and then i gotta make the mistakes and improve it was just a lot not just physically but like mentally like a lot of pressure because it was mainly on me right mm, like, mm. i'm the guys i'm the guy with the you know the construction uh skill set the specific right the specific but when you have a hot when you have a house there's like you got to learn a lot of different skills from all these other um all these other trades so mm. yeah and no, it was daunting it was daunting but yeah w- when it comes to traveling i feel like it's even a bigger possibility now um just mm. because of um high rent right yeah. you can always just rent out your home and you know if you're lucky enough to have someone in the neighborhood they can just take care uh of your property of anything you know if shit hits the fan which That's true i mean it could it could it definitely could um but let's say you travel for a month or two chances are nothing really is going to happen so yeah. at least you have someone paying into your mortgage yeah that's true I I think it has changed a lot. Like real estate just has a very, very long uh, positive track record. And just because of the rent and what's going on right now in society, I feel like it's one of the safest bets 
at this mm. point. I mean, they they say like always that oh, the you know, especially in Canada here, right? The the real estate market is yeah, bro. So, Twelve years in a row. That's what the that's what the data says. Like increasing. It's the biggest bubble yeah. in real estate, uh, Vancouver and Toronto. And they always say like I always hear those sayings about oh, it has to fall at some point, nah. right? But like. Like, not here, dude. I mean, I mean, because I guess that's what happened in two thousand eight, right? That was a uh, part of the financial crisis. But I mean, mm-hmm. the thing is, you know, yeah, it can fall, but it can fall in fifty years from now when we're seven or yeah. seventy in our seventies, right? Uh, can't wait that long, right, uh, for yeah. it to fall or anything, right? So, and yeah, I think our our, our bubble here is just, uh, you know, keeps going up and up every year, and a lot of it comes from, in my opinion, uh, a lot of foreign money that really fuels that, right? Yep. Um, and unfortunately for us, you know the the prices that that we pay for um, for rent and for or buying property and stuff like it's just something we have to just live with. Like that's the price it is, and that's what you have to deal with. Instead of, uh, but it's just so inflated. I mean, if you take what we can get here for a price, and you take that it's same ridiculous. price, and you go to like somewhere in the states or something, oh my god, it makes me so jealous. Honestly, yeah. you know. Um, because you know a new beginning for me as you know right is my my uh my new job in the states right yeah congrats oh thank you very much minnesota yeah yeah, minnesota yeah they're just like uh they're just like an an annex of canada just an extension of canada yeah dude right the way they talk apparently yeah man i mean um but no i don't know if i told you this um i was actually i was actually planning when i got there because i i've looked at the real estate market over there um in in uh, minneapolis the minneapolis area area yeah um and i just have a good feeling about this new job like i feel like it's a job that i could probably do for the long term and yeah. so if i was going to be there for the long term i don't want to be uh you know in apartments renting apartments all the time or whatever yeah. you know like i might as well put something to an investment right and uh the salary and the compensation that i'll have and everything will be sufficient enough that i can save um but like we're talking you know because I'm, you know, a single bachelor, right? Mm-hmm. And by the way, yeah, since you and your girlfriend, uh, uh, it's so much nicer buying with someone else, right? You oh, pool, yeah. you pool your money together and everything becomes so much more attainable, right? Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, for me, I got to think about myself and I'm like, okay, single salary. What can I afford on a single salary? And I've actually done those like mortgage pre-approvals that you can do like on yeah, yeah, banking yeah. websites and all that stuff. It was like 400 or 450. It's like enough for a bachelor. Or something. Yeah. Well, actually, like I did it based on my old salary with my old job, right? Which was pretty shit to be honest, right? Yeah. Um, my, uh, my range that they said I could, I could afford on a single salary like that for like a 30 year mortgage or something mm-hmm. was uh, like 210,000 or 220,000. So what is that? You can roll up your mat on a parking spot <laughs> yeah, in yeah. a condo. Yeah, I was. I was gonna <laughs> is that, say, is that someone's storage locker? Yeah, I was. I was gonna say just renting, <laughs> renting like a room above someone's garage, like like yeah, buying bro. a room above someone's garage, basically. So, so there's someone down the street renting a hole in their yard for <laughs> uh, around a thousand bucks a month here in it was Toronto. Like, it was like no, like they bought it for that, and, but uh, a hole in the yard. But but yeah, so but for that price though, at let's say two ten. Yeah. 210,000 where I'm going in the states I could buy a nice single family home uh for that you know like uh yeah, two bed one bath sort of thing um for that amount and I'm like wow that's actually really affordable and now you can get something um, great for that amount yeah and, and considering I'm I'm making I'm going to make more money than than that now so my my um realistic affordability would would be higher than that but i don't want to like go right up to the max it would be, anyway, a, lot, right? it would be a lot higher because they're first it's only uh you can get away with 3.5 percent down payment mm. and they're also a lot uh, more lenient when it comes to people getting houses and compared to here here it's like we're just trying to keep the houses to the investors to be honest and making hmm. it as difficult you know difficult for other people if that's what's going on here but in the states there's just a lot of land and there's a lot of houses right it's not mm. there's a lot of great cities in the states not just here in toronto you got vancouver and toronto and you know montreal's coming up also barry's doing pretty decent as well really okay yeah yeah um but uh yeah in the states you can get definitely a sweet ass house my aunt lives in uh texas houston oh she's, she does yeah, yeah she's a lawyer dude and she has like a fucking five bedroom house or something huge huge yard it was like 200k mm. yeah 
Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, I, the houses that I were looking at that were in the, you know, two hundred thousand range. Uh, yeah, single family homes and like the house itself might be a little small, but the the you can really luck out on like a nice uh, large property. Like, yeah, you know, like you get a nice yard, nice front yard as well, nice backyard. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a and I so I was telling my parents about this. Um, and they're like, oh, you know, he's moving to the states and everything. Oh no, you oh, know, just. You know, get eaten by a wildcat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I was, I was saying to them like, look, after, after one year, right, in this, in, in the new city, in the new job, mm-hmm. in Minneapolis. Yeah. But yeah, if, if I, I think after, yeah, if I survive, right, I don't want to get, I don't want to get shot on the street, right. But, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, piss, talk to someone the wrong way and piss them off. They just pull out their handgun and deal with you right away, nice and quick. But yeah. no, um. Uh, I was telling them, you know, after a year, I think I would get a sense of whether this would be a long-term thing or not. And after that, after a year, you what know, do you mean long-term? Like long-term living in Minneapolis, or yeah, long-term living in Minneapolis and the job as well, right? Yeah, like yeah. If, if I think, you know, this job, I could, this could be like my, uh, you know, career job. I could really grow in this, and this could be the one for me. Um, I think after that first year, I would get a sense of, yeah, I'm gonna be here in this job, in this situation for a long term, or mm, I don't see myself being here that long, that much longer. Yeah. Then I, if, if it was the former, mm-hmm. yes, long term, then I would, uh, seriously go hunting, um, for, for houses to actually purchase. Yeah. Um, and I told my, my parents that, you know, my plan, because, um, you know, I want, I want, I actually want my father to come down to Minneapolis with me and help me in that search. Right. Because he's, he's bought a house before he yeah. knows what to look for what to watch out, you know, how Mm -hmm. to, you know, the mortgage, you know, what's the best type of mortgage to do, you know, in my situation, you know, fixed rate, variable variable. rate. It's variable. It's variable. Over the long term, it's variable. That's what everyone says, right? But it's also very situational, right? It is But if if you take like a 10-year average or or above, Mm. variable is usually your best bet. But, I mean, times are always changing and facts are always changing, so... Could be different, um, yeah. But that that would be exciting. I'm excited for you, man. Go to yeah. Minneapolis. Like I said, every time I think of like American cities, I always think of the food that they have they have there that's like you know unique. I know because you got like was like you know Philadelphia obviously has their Philly cheese steaks. Exactly. New York has an amazing pizza, dude. New I York's, was honestly New pure, York style. That's right. Yeah, I was disrespecting this pizza joint. It was like a pamphlet I had at a hotel. It was called yeah. Like Triple A pizza or some bullshit. Yeah. I was like starving. I was so hungry, <laughs> and uh, you know it was really late, so we ordered it. I wasn't expecting anything, but dude, it was the best pizza I've ever had in my life. And I'm telling you, this was the dirtiest, most disgusting pamphlet for a pizza joint that you've ever seen <laughs> so i can't imagine what you know a good pizza place would taste like in new york city so honestly mm. like i i do wonder what what minneapolis has to offer food wise that's always exciting yeah i mean i i haven't heard uh i haven't really researched uh if minneapolis has a, a iconic food i mean but like if we're talking about it you know i mean yeah there's new york there's um you know because i'm driving out there so i'm gonna pass through buffalo cleveland um, I'm actually going to make a trip down to Cincinnati because they have a classic food called uh, Cincinnati chili. If you've oh, heard of that, no. Um, it's kind of like apparently it's it's not like your classic like um, Mexican style chili, like like beef chili or anything. It's uh-huh. it's more of like a medi- They describe it almost as like a Mediterranean flavored like meat sauce, almost like Jeez. it's very and but it, and it's put over spaghetti or Ooh. on a hot dog. Ooh, Those are the two on the ways. hot dog sounds and good. Eh? If you look it up, it's yeah, it's basically like uh, a chili dog. It's chili with uh, with uh, a bunch of like shredded cheese on top. Oh, as well. dude, that's a chili dog. No, but but uh, but the the uh, the chili is what makes it not like a classic chili dog because it's yeah, a Cincinnati chili, it's a which Cincinnati. is apparently what they say is it's not the, the locals say. Well, it's not really chili, right? Because yeah. it's not your. What you would think in your head of normal? Why chili, is it really right? chilly? Like, is there fucking dog meat there? No, no, no. I mean, because also, you know what they, some of the recipes actually that they put in, and I swear to God, this is true. They, they actually put in like, okay, yeah, they'll put in ground beef and uh, some like spices and and everything, but they also add for sweetness. They put in chocolate 
and oh, some recipes. So this yeah. is real style Mexican then, because the Mexicans will just shove that chocolate everywhere. Do they put that in chili? Yeah, dude. What are you talking about? Really? Yeah, dude. Yeah, because you add you add a sweetness and this tartness that and creaminess that comes with this ch- this chocolate, right? Mm. Yeah, the man, these Mexicans fuck with all kind of shit. Like last time I had this Mexican hot chocolate, which was spicy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they, yeah, I've heard of adding the chocolate inside the uh, the chili. So that sounds delicious. Yeah. That sounds real good. I mean, um, yeah. And it's there, rainy. There's, there's a few, uh, there's a few kind of classic places for it there in Cincinnati. Like one of them is called Skyline Chili and one of them is called Gold Star. How the fuck do you know this? Because I, I did research on this because uh, I was so fascinated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, because I, I heard, I heard, uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think it was, you know, around the Super Bowl time, it was, um, Los Angeles Rams versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. So yeah. Cincinnati was getting a lot of uh, hype around Cincinnati yeah. and everything. And and uh, anyway, they were talking about it on some sports show about uh, Cincinnati chili mm-hmm. and everything. And some people, either you like it or you don't. It's not really like... Why wouldn't between. you like it? It fucking sounds delicious. Yeah. Everybody I mean, likes chili, man. I don't... I, like, if you're hungry enough, you'll fucking eat chili, bro. Yeah. Like, I'll eat the chili even when I'm not hungry. Totally. You ever, like, put some sour cream in there? Yeah, sometimes. Some yeah. cheese, some guac. Cheese, guac. I mean, now yeah. we're just Mexican it up. Like some <laughs> yeah. chopped cilantro in there. Of course. Squeeze yeah. a lime. Yeah. Crunch some tortilla chips. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> you that's can go one. ham on the chili, dude. No, I know. So good. That's, um... Put it on your hot dog. Put it on your burger. Put it in a pulled pork sandwich. Mm. You do a lot of things with the chili. Totally. I mean, but anyway, apparently Cincinnati, Cincinnati has their, their style of it, which is, yeah. you know, you got to try it for yourself, right? Just to see what it is. And so that's yeah. what I figure, you know, try yeah. it for myself, see what it is uh, so that I, I can say I've tried it, right? Yeah. But uh, the other one is also, you know, I'm going to be going through uh, Chicago as well. So Chicago deep dish, pizza, mm. right? Which I've, I've had before, but I want to have again. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they got a lot of things to Chicago. Chicago, Chicago wieners, like Chicago hot dogs apparently yeah. is, a, is a thing as well. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, Minneapolis, I guess we'll see what they have there. I don't know, frozen icicles or something? Maybe. Minneapolis, yeah. <laughs> Minneapolis. Yeah. yeah, dude. Minneapolis are just like frozen nah, gotta... frozen icicles or something. Or like, fro- yeah. like sweet icicles. They're just like or something. premature apples and they're just scamming everybody. You know? <laughs> yeah. They're mini apples, but they're like not fully like grown apples. Yeah, right? Now nah, they got to have something, dude. Trust me. I know. They're going to have something delicious. No, I got to look it up. I got to do the research, but. Uh... Yeah, I'm looking. For, I'm looking forward to it though. Um, for new job, that's a new beginning for me. Um, oh yeah, it's gonna be exciting, man. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, now for you, um, can I suggest a new beginning for you? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah because I actually did not know this, and uh, our mutual friend Jeremy uh, just broke the news to me like like yesterday or something. Mm-hmm. Um, do you not have? Uh, your full driver's license? No, I do not. That's a new beginning that you can do, bro. Right there. I got my G one, dude. That's the learner's, right? Yeah, learner's that's a little license. bitch license, dude. <laughs> like, why are you so fucking lazy, man? Just get it. You know what? It's a. I'm not gonna lie to you. It might. It, it's. It's a mixture of procrastination, and laziness, but also, I really don't like vehicles. I don't like this no? idea. No, man. Like, I don't like this idea of owning this depreciating asset and Mm. and and not to mention that it's something that's enforced on us from society especially me as a tradesman like i gotta i gotta be that idiot on the dvp in Mm. my car you know Mm. wasting an hour or more a day just commuting like that was really sad i never wanted to be that Mm. um mind you i was still that sad but just on a bus full of sweaty crazy people (laughs) But for some reason, it was different. I, and I would save a lot of money, right? Like, yeah, the insurance here is insane as well. True, yeah. Right, but um, yeah, no, I realize I'm I'm definitely going to need a vehicle at this point. Um, it was fun without it. Saved a ton of money. Well, because because I thought, you know, um, in, in my job, you know, I work at sites where there's uh, the trades, uh, you know, construction workers and everything. And yeah. I thought it was... Uh, almost mandatory to have a full license as well as a access to a vehicle right to get to sites because sometimes you know you're driving um you know outside of where the transit goes right 
Um, yeah, it's just the demand I, here in Toronto. I, it's I, so I, big. Yeah, I guess. I guess in your. Uh, uh, I mean, they'll take you even if you have crutches or something. Yeah. At this point, <laughs> and, uh, like one, the demand in Toronto is giant. Be, one reason being because of real estate value. Yeah. Right. The way that I guess they're trying to. I mean, this is what they say they're doing. They're trying to, you know, uh, you know, help with the housing and affordability, and they're doing that by building condos. Right. Right. But um, with this giant boom in condos, it's literally haven't hasn't stopped in like the past twenty years. Like mm. it's been going, and it's only getting bigger now. Um, but there's also a lack of tradesmen, right? Mm, mm. There's a lack of workers. Not everybody wants to go in and sweat and carry heavy shit, and you know, deal with a bunch of people who just smoke cigarettes and eat bologna sandwiches <laughs> every day. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's the demand, right? They'll be like, oh, you know what? We're going to need the extra guy. So, you know, where do you live? Toronto? You know, if you take the TTC, that's still pretty accessible. Yeah. Especially with start times that are 7 a.m. Because the TTC starts running at like, what, 545? Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like that's an hour or yeah. so to get wherever you need to go. So that's still pretty pretty flexible. But, yeah, mm. having a car does does facilitate everything. That's true. I mean, I guess, I guess you know, t- yeah, like you said, Toronto, uh, so much demand and it's much bigger city than uh, Vancouver where I grew up where uh, you know outside of Vancouver if you're in the suburbs I mean the the trades jobs you're going from suburb to suburb and the transit is not as great right so it's oh, yeah. car is basically mandatory right yeah. Um, so yeah I guess yeah it just depends on the location so you're in a good location good uh, good demand for your job and uh, I guess yeah. yeah not I guess not a worry but um, because you know, you know like when we went on like camping, you know, in the last couple of years, like yeah. I had no idea that you didn't have a, a full license. Like you were on your learners. So like yeah. you needed Angie, your girlfriend to be there. Legit. Legit dude. in the car Legit. legally, right? <laughs> Legit. Well, legally I did, but I mean, I probably have thousands of hours worth of driving experience at this point. Oh yeah. Unrecorded. Um, yeah. Luckily enough, I never got into an accident or I never got caught in it, but <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. Because what uh, I, I assume, like when you got your G one, like now it's it. You've probably had to renew it. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, I think oh, a G one no. you takes what uh, lasts like two or three years. Two or three years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what, when when did you actually get it then? Like only two or three years I ago. Got, yeah, man. I got it when I was like what 24 or, or 25 really oh. i swear to you dude i swear. oh i was yeah. under the impression i thought you got it uh when uh, i thought you were driving like when we were like at university like when i first met you sometime. oh no 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 i would uh carpool oh. i would find ride share yeah that's what it was i would oh, just find okay. some other guy just going up there and just pay him 20 bucks oh, okay yeah yeah and then just come back the same way or take the go train or take something i don't know. i actually or don't ever remember via, via rail like the no or the ground how uh the ground oh the greyhawk oh, greyhound the greyhound, greyhound yeah, bus yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i would oh, take okay. those ones and they would take me straight to kingston oh so you got your license like pretty late and compared comparatively yeah, to everyone right yeah yeah like uh yeah, it, it, it was late but i don't know I, I don't know what to think about it do i regret it or am i happy with it i, I don't know i mean i don't i guess it's worked out so far i guess it was you know if if you let's say buy a car in your name, right, and you get insurance for it, like I think maybe your insurance would probably be higher than people the same age but got their license like when we were sixteen or seventeen, right? Because we have more driving years experience on paper, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, um, the thing is, like your insurance already drastically reduces as soon as you're over twenty five, mm-hmm. so you're gonna get that reduction, and also I get a reduction because I'm. I'm part of like a union job as well. So I can, Mm. I can put my local in there as well. Mm. But like, man, you live in Toronto, no matter what car, like, unless you're like, what, 40 or 50 years old, you're, you're definitely going to pay around maybe 200, 300 bucks a a month on on insurance. Yeah. Yeah. For your car. Like how much do you pay for your insurance? Well, actually that's a good question. That's a good topic because, uh, my, uh, renewal paper insurance papers came in for this next 12 month period, uh, which starts in April. Uh, until March 2023, mm-hmm. and uh, so I, I'm on a bundle, right? Um, so I have my mo- my car, motorcycle, and renter's insurance all together, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how you get the cheapest rates on everything. Um, so actually, my 
my car insurance went from 2200 a year last year uh, to uh, 2000 uh, this year. So it went down by a little over 200 bucks. Um, my great. Yeah, my renter's insurance went down by about 50 bucks a year. However, where they screwed me uh, was my motorcycle insurance went up by five hundred dollars this year. <laughs> so, so all overall, so you're not really getting any. <laughs> well, because yeah, it's the the motorcycles they try and screw you, right? Because Wait, uh, why do they try? Wait, aren't they trying to screw you everywhere though? Like, well, because uh, at least you know here in Ontario, where there's private insurance in this province, mm-hmm. um, the insurance companies can kind of just make up their own. Uh, calculating algorithms on how they calculate premiums for people right and so a lot of times with motorcycles uh, especially sport bikes which is what i ride uh, those are in in insurers mind they're the most risk because they're the most stolen they're the most accidents accident prone because there's a lot of douchebags that ride sport bikes you know Mm. you see the guys wheeling down uh you know young street or whatever like those guys or something uh yeah and so guys that actually are pretty normal on their bikes that don't do stupid shit like me uh we just have to take the the take the hit take the hit because of all the douchebags that wreck it for the rest of us right yeah so um so anyway and what i was told was you know um from our my family friend john in mississauga who who um is also he's been riding for like 30 40 years he says uh yeah what probably what they're trying to do is they're trying to price you out you know they're trying to just raise your rates every year until they they want you to drop your your motorcycle insurance because they see it as too much risk, right? Um, but yeah, so but also all in all, long story short, all in all, uh, this next year I'm gonna be paying, you know, about two hundred fifty dollars more altogether than than this last year. Now I'm I'm gonna go around and shop for some motorcycle insurance somewhere else, right, to see if. Someone cannot screw me in the balls, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's my life, dude. Fuck. Just get an e-bike, dude. Dude, I hate those, man. It's no not... insurance. You go, <sighs> what, 32 kilometers max? Come on. <laughs> you can take it to a mechanic, get it rigged, and it can go up to like 50 kilometers <laughs> or 55. Just barely dude, the speed on a, limit. on a sidewalk, that's fast as fuck. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah, that's you're true. walking. That's true. You're walking on a sidewalk, and you see a guy just blast past you, fucking uh, 55 kilometers on this emo bike. It's pretty insane, man. Especially, especially you're walking when, when with your AirPods in your ears and everything. You don't hear him coming. Just, <laughs> boom. Yeah, dude. He has like fucking four large pizzas on his head while he's just biking on this emo. I had a drug dealer uh, who used to have an electric bike when they first came out, and honestly, oh, yeah. that's when I gained another level of respect for drug dealers yeah like, this guy's fucking smart because he had a little compartment on his seat so yeah he could keep all his drugs <laughs> so he just scoot around in this electric bike no insurance no gas just yeah. charges it has his drugs down there meets people hands <laughs> out the drug drives around like <laughs> man it was really cool that's that's how um that's how I guess you know all those Uber Eats and DoorDash uh, riders. You know they, it's the most efficient way to have that job, right? Because it doesn't really cost anything. No insurance on those yeah. e-bikes and everything. Yeah, they're you fast can still enough. Get there fast. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, cool. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe one day, just for the shits and giggles, you know. Well, yeah, you'd be definitely downgrading. From oh a yeah, sports bike for sure. <laughs> to, a, Dude. Or, to an e-bike is a downgrade, but going from no bike to e-bike, that's a hell of a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine. But no, once you taste that speed, that speed, man, that a sport bike gives you, and ah. the sound too, like this machine's sound. vibrating, like it's I alive know, when you turn it on, and you're, it's taking you places. It's a bond that you create. With it. I know. I mean, apparent apparently. Uh, it's kind of a, a joke or something, but apparently, you know, you can get a girl to come on the back. Can you actually like come, actual come? You know? Yeah, but really from the vibration because it's you so can? satisfying. It's just a joke. Like, oh, but, but all you right. know, but I mean, that sounds <laughs> sort of believable if she's never been on a bike. Well, yeah, because apparently, you know, because uh, on the back seat, uh, you get more vibrations from the exhaust. Yeah, and uh, and you know, think about it, you know, her. Yeah, her. downstairs area is right over it's top, right there, and she's straddling this big vibrating machine, right? Just, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. right. And apparently, yeah, it can be satisfying for them. So, see, but you know, what won't be so satisfying. What? 
when you hop off the bike and then you try and fuck her and she's desensitized as shit. Oh, yeah. She's like, is it even in yet? Because <laughs> you've been just driving around in your motorcycle with her in the back seat and she came, you feel like a boss. And then when you go to bed, she can't feel shit. Her ass is numb. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But like, I mean, I can see that. I'm sure someone's fucking coming on the back seat of a motorcycle. Yeah. I I can I can see it, but uh, dude, I still haven't even taken a a girl on the back. I, I, no one has actually gone on the back of my bike before. Yeah, yeah, dude, like I think that's that's where it's really gonna change for 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 you because you're asking like you know I don't know if it's permanent or not. Yeah, mm-hmm. just wait until uh, you meet a girl, then I think you'll have an answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, then it because everything changes, man. <sighs> right? Then you're like, oh man, I, you know really like this girl you want to hang out with her all the time you guys are just having fun experiencing everything new together then you're like yeah you know what mm-hmm. i'm gonna stay here in Minneapolis, bro. <laughs> yeah. i like this place you know yeah of course man i mean i guess that's also something for me right now is you know i don't have that that girl in my life uh here in toronto so there's no real difficult decision on that end for me to go pack up and move somewhere else right mm, you know because you don't have to think about anyone yeah you got um, that freedom you know, I think that's also, you know, in, in my life uh, so far, like, you know, I, you know, was in France for a couple of years and then yeah. came back and then recently just in, in Poland for the last four months. And, you know, those decisions were super easy for me because I didn't have anyone to think about. Right. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, there comes a point, where, you know, I, I want what you have, Matthias. I want. Yeah. You know what? You pick know. your pick your sacrifice. That's that's yeah. what I tell people. <laughs> yeah, because. Every action has a positive and negative reaction. True. Everything, 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 everything. So, you know, even when it comes to giving a homeless guy $5. Yeah. That could be really nice, but there's a consequence to that. You just lost $5. Yeah. <laughs> you know, however you want to put that. But yeah, yeah every, everything has a consequence. So, yeah, I mean, like in your perspective, you know, you can take all these uh, uh, risks and go out and, you know, do on your own part without asking or telling anybody right yeah. but then obviously there comes times and you're like oh you know what it's like 9 p.m i'm on netflix i wish i could you know cuddle somebody or some shit mm. right like mm-hmm. i'm sure it comes to those two points right but yeah man you just you you, you pick that sacrifice and what you want to what you want to deal with i'm gonna take a hit of that vape give me that yeah dude of course actually like i might need to refill it soon um how do you even oh yeah you can see it here yeah it's I, not I it's not super it. reliable i i usually just take out the the pod to to look at the the level but uh you could probably lace this with weed a little bit in here with if, the like the, you, with like the cbd oil or something yeah or like some kind of i mean if that's oil or something i'm sure you can figure something out oh yeah i mean i never thought of it that like that because uh yeah i mean never well i have i have vape vaped weed before but uh uh I think for me, in terms of weed, the the best uh, form to take it is uh, edibles. You know, I love edibles. Oh, they're super efficient. Oh, super efficient, and yeah. they. I mean, obviously, hit like you the edibles. Hardest. Yeah, they hit you the hardest. Like they fuck you up. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like a massive body high too. But but I just think the way they come on, like the way the high comes on, uh, is so nice and kind of uh, easy and not like really harsh and everything. Like like a bong hit, right? Well, just yeah. Woo right to the brain right away Fuck but that. uh yeah no edibles really great so it's a, like um, slow mm. um digestion like it slowly gets into your blood exactly right but it's also very very potent and yeah i mean there's also that idea that like am i peaking right now or not I, you never <laughs> yeah. know you might just get even higher yeah <laughs> yeah when you, when you eat that edible i mean you know what you know what uh jeremy and i came up with an idea one time about edibles you know how an edibles um, each gummy is, uh, as an example, has weed in it, right? Yeah. And so basically an edible experience is only eating one gummy and that's it, right? But because the gummy tastes so good, because it's like, it tastes like real candy, what if you had, uh, for for each gummy, it was in its own pack of normal candy? So for instance... Oh, so you don't know. You have, yeah, so you have one, let's say you have uh, a gummy that you buy, you know, uh, that has 10 milligrams in it, mm-hmm. but it's in a pack of regular, like it's a fuzzy peach, but it's in a pack, in a side a pack of regular fuzzy peaches. Yeah, I love fuzzy And so peaches, it's actually. it's just like you're eating normally yeah. a candy like you would, but you're getting high because there's a gummy in there instead yeah. of just eating one gummy by itself and that's it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Because it, just, it tastes so good. 
Right. Oh, so you mean like selling a dose, but in a pack of multiple gummies so you can enjoy. Exactly. Inside a pack of multiple normal gummies. True. Yeah. yeah. That would be, that would be good. Right. Yeah, that's interesting, dude. Yeah. I, so. I had like a, reminds me of like this clever idea I thought I had back in high school of like, I told Jeremy this one before and it was like, I was like, yo, think about it. How do people get high, man? Mm. You can inhale it. You can digest it yeah. by, you know, eating it. I'm sure you could fucking put it directly in your bloodstream. I'm sure there's some way of someone doing that. <laughs> but then I thought all those ways are also, you know, you could probably get high by putting it on your dick. <laughs> yeah. That's what right. I was like. What if you had marijuana sex jelly? <laughs> marijuana sex jelly. Why not? And I, I th- yeah. I'm pretty sure at this point they have it. Oh, yeah. But like, you know, you're using it as lube. You guys mm. are fucking and 30 minutes later, you're both stoned as shit. <laughs> mm. Look at these ideas we're yeah, having. I, I don't know. How, I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how, you know. I don't know how it would work out or how high you would get. But I mean, it would definitely get it would definitely go into your bloodstream if it's if it's in there. You know, if it's on your penis or, you know, because. What, it just go just but, well, gets it, up your dick, I guess. Yeah, well, look, look how s- there's some people that get drunk by like soaking their tampons in vodka, right? It, it goes in your bloodstream. Mm. So if you oh. had like THC, I actually never heard of that before. Oh. Yeah, dude, I don't I don't oh. know who fucking does it. Some psycho, but <laughs> apparently it's like a crazy buzz, right? For huh. the little amount of alcohol that you do have in there. Yeah. Um, and I don't know who in the right mind would do that, but clear it's clear mm. that it, you know whatever's there goes can go into your bloodstream yeah wow that's nuts. so i think it's quite plausible to have marijuana sex jelly be effective and actually be like oh yeah you know after a few minutes of fucking you get a buzz out of it too man dude that must be crazy because you're about to climax and then you get high as shit yeah. <laughs> dude these are million dollar ideas man yeah. oh, no there's God. fucking there's weed jelly somewhere out there someone's there's someone yeah. fucking each other with getting high yeah, no, I don't doubt it at all. But, uh, oh man, what do you say? What do you say? Do we uh, do the game soon? Yeah, let's uh, let's bring those bags over here. Yeah, I forgot to bring them in the room before we started. No, but, I'll uh, go get them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll just uh, I'll just talk by myself or something. Yeah, you can also here. fucking edit it. Yeah, out true. Or some shit. I'll get you the beer as well. Yeah, might as well. Have you done that? Yes. All righty. All right, so we're back. Um, back at it. But yeah, so I guess we got new drinks. Uh, we also got uh, our bags for this game we're going to play. So um, we Matthias, went... explain the game to everyone. Yep, yep. Uh, I wanted to incorporate some props um, for this uh, podcast. I want it to be funny and improvise a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So I... I we went and we got three random things at Value Village. I got three random things, and Misha got three random things, and we're going to use these objects to improvise something. Now, the three things that Misha got, I have no clue what they are, and he has no clue what I got. So we are going to play almost like a game where I'm going to pull out an object that he doesn't know about and pretend like I found it in his backpack. He's then going to have to improvise and explain to me why he has this object. Now, these objects can be, like, absurd. Like, you you know what you can find at a value village. Some of this shit's <laughs> whack. And let me tell you, we already had, like, a bunch of people look at us like creeps. Yeah. Trying to buy the most randomest, the most, like, appalling objects that you can find that make absolutely no sense. Yeah. So, the first one's going to be going into someone's backpack, pulling out the object that you bought, and then I have to improvise and say, oh, you know, that's why I own this, this thing, and blah blah blah. Same goes for you. So we 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 can start with that. Okay. Right. And then and then at, at the second object. We'll then then the second object will change it up a little bit, and the third object. But it's all improv, pretty much. Of course. Um, and you want you want to make it believable too, right? Like of as course. if as if I actually found this object in your backpack, and you're trying to <laughs> you got to come up with a real idea to <laughs> to explain yourself. And I I know there's no visuals on here, so we'll do our best to explain what these objects look like. But yeah, I, I think when we pull it out of the backpack, should we say what it is? Like, oh, that 
mm-hmm. oh that uh, yeah yeah we'll that explain blah, it blah 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 that I have it because blah, blah, blah. yeah yeah something yeah something like that okay so uh, <laughs> shit so uh, do do are you gonna go first sure so I pull out something yeah out of your backpack yeah pretend like you're going through my backpack All yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, Matthias, what is this? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Let me see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude. Why, oh. do you, why do you have that in your backpack? Oh, look at that. A picture of a... Uh... It's a little foldable, uh, foldable, foldable <laughs> picture frame uh, with a picture of a girl and a dog on here. <laughs> Who is that? Um, That is a little girl that I met at a park with her dog. Mm. Yes. At a park. Okay. Yep. Yep. It was a. Uh, how how old is this girl? What, like ten? Would you say nine? Oh, definitely like not. That? No, a little bit younger. Here she mm. looks like what, maybe five or six years old. Mm. And why why yeah. is a twenty six year old man <laughs> meeting a ten year old at a park? Explain. <laughs> well, I was there smoking a joint. Mm, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I just saw this girl with a dog. Man, I just I had to take a picture. You know, it just looked like. She was just having so much fun, and it, it it brought a tear to my eye to see that kind of joy. You know, something so simple as uh, having a dog in your life. I thought, you know, I really like to keep this as a memory. And I know it's mm. a giant ass photo. I mean, I could just probably keep a photo on my on my phone, but I yeah. feel like the physical copy in a foldable frame is just so much better. It really accentuates it and. You know, mm, of shows course. to people just how important this is to me. Like, I was even thinking of putting it on a chain. You know how the lock? Oh flips, yeah, and yeah, I can just exactly. Fold and it, them and it just opens. And yeah. be like, do you know this little girl? <laughs> and then people would go no, and I'd be explain the whole same the, the whole same story. Wow. To you, I'm I'm surprised. I mean, I didn't. Know, I'm really curious. I didn't know uh, what to expect. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean. Uh, did you did you see the? They had a bunch. Of, they had a few picture frames with some random pictures in that Value Village. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that would be a, a good yeah. One. This one's this one's great, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, this is great oh. too, actually. I mean, you could even. And it's a little flimsy, but yeah, I know the backs are like falling out and shit. Yeah, I would even but... take maybe like, but you can actually use this as a picture yeah. frame. But who the hell has pictures anymore? Yeah, I know it's all digital, right? Yeah, no, it's all digital now. You still got people like Jay who like take photos and do those, you know, like some nice pictures that you get on. Uh, oh yeah. On, uh, uh, you know, shit. What do you call those types of, types of cameras on digital? Um, or just film. Like the, oh, yeah, film yeah, cameras, yeah. The professional film cameras, right? Yeah. That'd yeah. Be nice to appreciate it on on a on something like this. Yeah. So that was that was great. That was funny. I think it's time for me to pull something out of your backpack. Out of my backpack, okay. Yeah, man, because it's kind of smell a little danky in there. Yeah? Yeah, dude. And it's kind of wet at the bottom of your backpack. Okay. I I try to point it out, but you seem to have ignored it. So I'm just (laughs) going to go in there and 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 try to, like, see whatever whatever's in there it could be just a pop juice a kool-aid or some yeah a juice box well, i'm something. interested to see what i have in my backpack yeah dude the fuck is this dude oh yeah i remember buying buying this yeah i remember yeah? this in my backpack don't explain yourself what is that yeah so uh this is um uh and an ornament of a boy praying and it just reminds me of how uh how my faith in god has uh deteriorated over the years and how i should go pray at church but i never do because i like to do other better things with my sundays um but this always reminds me of how, how much of a bad boy i'm being yeah. so uh yeah this ornament uh, i have on my nightstand uh, of a little boy on his knees. A little boy on his knees uh, yeah. with his hands <laughs> together praying. He's not yeah. doing anything else, people. Just praying nice. to God. Yeah. And uh, just reminds me of how I'm a terrible Catholic. Terrible <laughs> Catholic boy. Um, why, do you, why do you have it in your backpack? Oh, you know, I just like to bring it around with me. Uh, 
you know, in case uh, in case I meet a nice Catholic girl. Uh, and you're just going to show her a I'm statue sh- of a boy on his knees? And- yeah, I'm just going to show her that, hey, I am Catholic too. I am uh, praying. <laughs> I do believe in God. I'm a believer um, because, you know, I just want, you know, apparently the Catholic girls uh, are wild, apparently. They're because, wild? Well, no, because, because you know, like they, their, their parents. They never I mean, had if, any? If, if they're yeah. traditional, like, you know. Uh, somewhat very religious, you know. They, you know, their Catholic girls are supposed to be goody two shoes, but apparently they uh, like to defy their parents, right, and everything. So. Really, jeez, I want to meet some of these Catholic girls. Literally. Yeah, I mean, um, I knew a couple when I was, you know, younger when we were in elementary school and stuff, yeah. and, or early high school. But you know, at that point, I wasn't a full, fully mature male uh, <laughs> with uh, that knew how to talk to girls. Let's say so. Now I think I could get a Catholic girl, especially with this with this ornament, you yeah, know, little, little boy, yeah, yeah. Also, like like you and the girl, little girl picture uh, <laughs> that you put around a chain, you know. I, this this is this is a nice chain chain ornament um, on my chain. So, yeah, yeah, buddy. Oh wow, yeah. God God's blessings on this day. That's what it says on here. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're thinking of having a backpack, but you know what? I'll 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 accept that excuse. <laughs> that sounds nice pretty good. All right, that was that was the first round of items. That's no, funny. So now what do we now what what happens for the second round? Uh, I think for the second round, um, you're gonna you're gonna pull something out of your bag of those mm-hmm. three of the of the second item that you bought that I have no idea about, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be a gift from me to you. Okay. And when you see it, I want you to react. You know how you would try to normally react and whatever you picked out i'm pretty sure is a terrible gift to somebody Mm -hmm. so it's up to me to explain myself as to why i got you that object or why i got you that gift okay and once again i don't know the things that you picked out and that's where the improv part comes out so you take something out of your bag as if it's a gift from me and then you basically say what the fuck is this okay because chances are it's going to be way off, right? <laughs> we, yeah. we we pick some random ass objects. So of course. I got to go and explain myself as to why okay. I would have got you that gift. Do you want? Yeah, you can go first. Sure. Um, Actually, or, I mean, you can go first. I went yeah. first last round. You okay. can go first this round. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. So you're picking an object out of your bag yeah. as it's a gift from me to you. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> it's a fucking VHS, dude. <laughs> Are you serious? Heidi. Yeah. Fucking oh, Heidi? Yeah. Wonder wonderful classic movie. What the yeah. fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Wait, let me, it's let me 2022. See. Let me see the cover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why'd you give me a VHS? Um Oh, because honestly, you know, I thought uh I thought uh, you were gonna go buy a VHS player in that in that Value Village, uh, so I thought maybe you know just to start you off, uh, I could get you a, your first tape, your first VHS tape. Um, so yeah, what Heidi. Think, Heidi, what with, is that? Like you got some bond with that? Um, no, Which, not. Where'd you get that? Someone as a gift? Not particularly. You I got just... me fucking Latin, fucking Bugs Life or something. Heidi. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Just like the the picture. On the front, you know, a, a girl in... Have you ever seen like, this movie? Like an Amish girl? No, I have not. I have not. But, uh, you know, that's that's part of the fun. So you that's got your boy the... some random VHS. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, hey, maybe we could watch it together. I don't know. Yeah, so I mean... Uh... <laughs> let's hope they fucking rewinded it. Maybe I have to rewind it myself. Yeah, right? But, uh, no, I mean, look, it's a classic tale of an orphan girl sent to live with her grandfather in the Swiss Alps. And I, I've, I've heard of it. Yeah, you have? Yeah, you see? Yeah. So, uh... I'm just shocked you'd get me a fucking VHS. You, hey, I'm, you could have just fucking sent me a URL or something. I could have just I'm, opened it. Dude, I'm, I'm old school, man. I'm old school. Just like, uh... You know, just like I'm, I'm old school, traditional when it comes to girls. You know, I don't go on, on those dating apps. You know, I like meeting in person. Classy. I'm a classy guy. You know, I like records, you know, instead you know. of uh, iPods and, or iPhones and everything. Even though I have one, so it's kind of hypocritical. But... You know, uh, I, th- I'm, I think VHS is making a comeback, right? And I'm really? To, and I'm trying to get you to be one of the first. People. VHS, there is no, there is nothing VHS has on 
like DVD has or, nothing to offer. Not anymore. even just just like streaming or or just downloading a file and just yeah. watching it. Really? Mm. Well, there, see, there's a difference with records, mm. but they're because the record still has that physical vibration that happens within the disc. And it has the, that. Apparently, it has like uh, some really good sound quality. Like uh, yeah, well, yeah, right? it's like uh, you know, it goes from analog to to that whole stereo. Yeah. And you get to hear it, but most importantly, you got those grooves in there vibrating on the needle. It's a completely different sound. When it comes mm. to music, records are better mm. than um, you know your digital a digital sound. Yeah. So that does. But a fucking VHS, dude, there's no, nothing better. I got to rewind that shit, okay? Every time <laughs> I finish watching it. And the quality's rancid. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that. I'll tell you right now. I'm just oh, going to fucking throw man. it out. I don't even like Heidi, man. You could have gotten me so, like, anything else but that. Aladdin. I'm disrespected. Aladdin King. Yeah. I know. Well, okay. I'm sorry. But, oh, well, I thought I'd take a shot, you know, and. Oh, well, yeah, we can just throw it out. Who cares? <laughs> no worries. But, hey, don't blame me if VHS does make a comeback because I tried to get you on at Ground Zero. So, thank you. Your loss, dude. Yeah, I'll give it to my uh, grandma. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. you see? Yeah, I'm sure she'll, she'd love it. I'm sure she met Heidi. So. Probably, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, okay. I'm trying to... Okay, I think, yeah, this is the gift you... Uh, got me uh here you go buddy happy birthday <laughs> oh ho, ho, you like it what is what is this <laughs> see it's uh it's a little squirt gun with a rubber ducky on top mm, i see um i thought you might want to have this um, because you can just actually suck up a little bit of lube in here. Ah. And when you okay. shove it right up your rectum <laughs> over there, you can just pump it directly in there. Um, it's extremely handy when you're in, your, in the pool, man, because if you're doing it in the pool, you need that. Mm. You need that extra saliva, if you know what I mean. When it of course. it comes to this stuff. And I, I, I just thought it was an innocent touch with a little rubber ducky. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, so I insert it. I insert it in my rectum. Is that? A, yeah, if is? that's what you want, dude. Oh, okay. I mean, you can use it for anything. You could just suck up some barbecue sauce and start squirting it on the ribs on the barbecue. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, dude. I, I would definitely use it for uh, lubing up. Um, but I thought you'd like that. I mean, you can even uh, suck that. Suck up some of that nicotine stuff in there. Oh yeah. Like putting little droplets in your vape. <laughs> yeah, I just. I, thought, I, thought right. might, I, I think might, I think I'll, yeah, like I'd, I'd probably use it for the lube. The lube. Yeah, I think uh, this reason. is actually a pretty good gift, to be quite honest. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what? I feel like this could squirt out water pretty, uh, pretty potently. Oh, totally, man! Like, there's some pressure there. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it works, eh? It does. Man. I think for a Value Village uh, fine for you know 199, this is a fucking great gift. I know, man. Value Village provides, so I try and tell people. No, this is know. actually nice, man. Like. Oh, yeah, dude. Definitely been used. Needs a little fucking clean. <laughs> I guess someone else shoved it up their ass. <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely. Yeah, man. Oh. I, I, I'm glad you love your gift, dude. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. 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 Oh, mm. dude, these are some good, uh, some good objects, some good uh, gifts, some some good finds that we're finding in each other's backpacks that we're yeah. gifting to each other. No, and it was a. I think it's an interesting idea. There's so much stuff. I feel like you could do definitely if, if if you had a some video it would it would add to it just so people could see the objects but I know I think the whole concept of uh you know trying to incorporate these finds and and these props and and trying to improvise there's something there mm. there's something uh very funny um and interesting just because like all these objects are relatable you know yeah, all totally. these things that you find in Valley Village they already come and they live different lives from other people That's so That's true Every single object has a story, and everybody can relate to it, and it's so fucking funny. But I, I I've already figured out what the third, uh, the the last one is. Oh, okay, what is it? Tell us. Uh, the last one is gonna be y the only object that you would bring 
if you were stranded in a desert. Mm, so okay. when you when you pull that object, mm. I got it. When you pull that object, the last object inside your bag, which I don't know what it is, mm. that would be considered the only object that I would bring into a desert. So therefore, I have to improvise and explain to you why I chose that object. The same okay. goes. The same goes for yours. Okay. So okay. I'll go first. Okay. So let's see what you would bring when you, if you were stranded in the desert. The oh, excuse me. Ah, ah, a, a landline telephone. A landline Panasonic telephone. Ah, in a desert, man. So can you explain to me if you're stranded on a desert and you're only allowed to have one object, why the fuck would it be a landline telephone? Um, well, I think, I think, you know, in the desert, uh, there's a landline. Well, let me, let me say this. Okay. In, in society, in, uh, if you believe in like the, the, the big bang and everything and the evolution of humans and everything, everyone, humans came from Africa originally. Right. And in Africa, there's the desert. Right. And, uh, so, uh, Africa and the desert, it's the beginning of time. And so in the beginning of the phone times, they had landlines. So I just thought, you know, landlines in the desert, uh, you know, it just goes well. Dude, I don't know, man. I, I think I might have fucked up on that one, to be honest. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was thinking of a... I, I couldn't think of anything in my head, man. But uh, I must have been drunk when I bought... when I thought of this one but uh you know what that's pretty pretty good <laughs> at least you're honest you know deserts are you know have been there for thousands yeah. of years landlines have been there for thousands of years so i just thought maybe they've been yeah to the, i yeah. don't know you know yeah. but uh <laughs> you fucked up that's what I... yeah i know i'm just talking out of my ass dude. i don't know i don't know man <laughs> you know what <laughs> i I don't think anyone has a good explanation why they bring them by. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the other... To their, to, as their only object. Well, I, I mean, mean, at the same time, it almost it almost feels like that person had the right idea of maybe having the ability to call somebody, but mm. the fact that this shit needs to be plugged in, powered up, and the use of a landline pretty, pretty much makes it half-ass. I know. But I mean, hey, oh. I mean... So, like, cell phones wouldn't technically wouldn't get service in the desert either, right? So, I mean, I guess... Uh, maybe they could, man. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. You know, the Starlink, dude. Maybe you could get... Maybe you can get service over there. Yeah, potentially. But, uh... Jeez, dude. How technology advances. I know, right? Before, you, you always had to stay close to the phone. You know, the, you oh, had that little cord... I know. You play with while you talk. <laughs> yeah. Now exactly. you know you can just have AirPods on. <laughs> yeah. With no too. no nothing on there, and you're just walking around. Dude, before we know it, we're not even gonna have phones. We're just gonna have chips in our minds, and we're just gonna yeah, be dude. just talking just by hitting our ear. Just yeah. yep, you know. And then the other ear is gonna be our second line. It's like, hold on, I got another call. Tap the other ear. You know. Literally. Yeah. Just gonna have wired in our in our bodies. You know. Yeah. You you're, you're not gonna know if someone's staring at you or just trying to Google something inside their brain. <laughs> exactly, dude. But uh, yeah, that was a good one. Okay. I'm also yeah. trying to remember phone numbers. You had to know that stuff. You had to write oh, yeah. it down. Like, there's nothing that like. I mean, let's let's see what you could actually do on this phone. So you can basically change the volume. Mm. Uh, you got obviously your number dial here, and you got flash. You remember flash? Flash. What what, what was that? Like uh, flash would let you uh basically call someone else. And sometimes if you oh. fiddled with it, I don't know how what you would press, but if you press flash yeah, um, or hold flash, you could join calls. Sometimes they give you the availability. Oh. But if you press flash, you can just you can put someone on hold, but let's say keep them in one line, start another line, call someone else. Yeah. Press flash again. Ah. And then be back there. There's also redial, which is pretty good. Redial, uh, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's so uh, somewhat I mean, kind of I mean, useful. I, I I remember um, like before I had a, a cell phone, right? I would, I was, I could memorize like my group of friends, like home phone numbers and everything. So, because uh, I was just using, I was just calling from the landline at my parents' house, right? So, yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, I had them all memorized. My mom's work phone number, my dad's work phone numbers, their extensions, my. My best friend's landline numbers at their homes, you know, yep. just everything. I'd probably like, I'd probably like all these maybe numbers. like 
10 to 12 numbers memorized at one time, you know? Now you can um, barely memorize a few. You can barely memorize your own number, right? I know. <laughs> like, there's, dude, there's, yeah, there's some people that don't know their actual number, right? No, it's um, crazy, eh? Yeah, but uh, amazing how the world's changed now, right? But, um, yeah, dude, just pull pull over that object. This is honestly the best thing you could have in a desert if course. you're stranded. Of course, dude. Um, Holy fuck. <laughs> so this... Oh, the last shit. thing Matthias would have in uh, with him. One thing in the desert is a naked uh, three-year-old doll, basically. Let me t- let me let me explain myself with here. a hole in the bottom. You see that? Oh there. my god! Yeah. So why would that be the? the oh last? my god! Please no. <laughs> I mean, I'm, uh, I'm assuming because you know you 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 probably get lonely, right? Stranded in the desert. So. Oh yeah, you definitely look like a creep at Value Village <laughs> trying to buy this. Yeah, I know, man. I know. I mean, it even has a battery compartment at the at the back. Oh, it does! Right? I didn't even see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think this baby's supposed to talk or something. Oh. This is basically like a little baby doll, uh, just butt naked over here. It has a battery compartment at the back. Its mouth is open in a weird way. I feel like this girl maybe came with like a milk bottle, probably, yeah, or something you would feed. But the weird part is it has a hole in its butt, and. Kind of There's like... something rattling in there. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it could be something from the battery, but I don't know. It could be one of those babies that eats, drinks, and poops everything out. Yeah, right? Oh, God. What came out What came out there? Dry Play-Doh. <laughs> oh, was that what's rattling? Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's kind of nasty, dude. Oh, man. Uh, Honestly, if I'm stranding on an island, mm. you know, I'm a human being, man. I deserve some connection to something. Of course. And I feel like this baby doll would give me the hope mm. of making it through those cold nights in the desert and those hot days. Absolutely. Just a constant reminder that, um, you know, I used to be a little kid. Yeah. All innocent and, um, you know, inexperienced and, you know, just threatened by absolutely everything. Um, mm. It just... I feel like maybe you don't need those. Maybe you don't need any object in the desert. Maybe all you need is this motivation, this inspiration to make you power through That's your time point, in the yeah. in, in the desert. So I think this this uh, baby doll here is the best thing to have it because you know what, <laughs> this baby doll needs you. It, it needs it needs a you know someone to support it. Of course, someone to go out there and, and you can't do that in the desert. You know, I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I definitely think this is the best, uh, the best thing out there. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, that's great, dude. I mean, yeah. yeah honestly, with that uh, object was probably the the weirdest one, like buying <laughs> at the at the checkout. Man. No, I, I I saw you standing by all the dolls. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't know what he's gonna get over here. Well, well, dude, there's I don't know if you saw in like one of the first aisles in the store there was um there was like the it's almost it's almost like it looked like those he- those heads like mannequin heads with hair on it. Oh like, yeah, like those are expensive. Hair though, eh? It was like twenty five dollars yeah, a piece, right? I know. I yeah. thought that, that would have been hilarious, but I'm like twenty five bucks. I know. I was like, no I, way. Are they man. that expensive? Well, because I think those are the things that like hairdressers just train on, like cutting hair, right? But um, the hair doesn't even regrow. No, I know, but like um, I think I think maybe maybe the hair is like removable and they put a. Oh, so true. Like, I didn't even touch it or feel, or. I, okay. I thought it was a. I thought it was like a makeup mannequin. Like you could. Oh just... yeah, maybe right. Yeah, but imagine if they're twenty five bucks at Value Village. These things are going for like a hundred bucks. I know on Amazon or something. I mean, that's why I thought it had to be some sort of like training material for some profession. Um, yeah. Whether yeah, makeup artist or hairdresser or something. I don't know, but. Um... Yeah, I also thought of uh, getting you this naked Ken uh, Barbie doll. Oh, yeah. You know Ken? Mm. Yeah, they had one of those the bags there, but... I didn't even see that one. Yeah, I, I felt like it would have been too too much. I wanted something different, something that maybe can create something uh, unique. <laughs> I think that Naked Barbie, uh, Naked Ken doll would have been funny, but there yeah. was also, uh, yeah, all, all, all kinds of, the, there all was, kinds of like, things the, there. There was one that I was thinking either that, that between that rubber ducky, like, water squirter thing, or... Yeah. Um, just a, a like a long cylindrical uh, pepper grinder thing. Yeah, and I, I I was basically wanting, 
I, Fuck, I would have taken hope, that home, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yo, pepper grinders. Could have. Nice. My, my my hope was that you're going to say something like shoving up your ass or something. <laughs> but well, of like, course, yeah. that's what you bought that. Yeah. So uh, it's a good yeah. fucking ogre's butt plug, dude. I just had I just had sexual, you know, uh, like sexual thoughts when buying those things. I was just like, you know, how can this be sexual? How can this yeah. object be sexual? It's going to be you know? really funny. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, especially because like m- most of the value village is clothing. Yeah. You know, for grown women and grown men. No, I know. So you, you, if you want to get that shock, you're definitely going to the kids section where the toys are. You're going to go to mm. maybe the electronics section to get something that's absolutely outdated and stupid looking. Like there's this one calculator that had like the potential to, you know, print out stuff. Oh, so really? you would, yeah, you would like type out stuff and it would print it out like, like some oh. kind of receipt. Oh yeah. So that like, there's some really old tech that you would have thought never existed that you would find at value village. Yeah. I, I know, I know when the last time I went to value village back in Vancouver, um, uh, I noticed at least with the clothing, Man, it's like 75, almost probably 90% like women's clothing and women's shoes. And yep. like met for like men's clothing and men's shoes, it's just like very small sections, you yeah. know. That's that's why, because I was telling, I was in Valley Village with my mom and my aunt. And uh, I was like, I was telling them like, why are there, I'm like, I didn't realize cute girls shop at these places, right? And, uh, and, I, and then I realized to myself, I'm like, oh, you know why? Because there's, it's mostly just girls clothing. And uh, yep. and especially like young girls like you know are around our age and stuff. I mean, it's an easy way to get outfits for like a fraction of the price instead of going to some designer place, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get really nice clothing at these places, honestly. Yeah, um, I mean, and I mean, you can just take this all scientific too, in the sense that you know, chances are women are are switching out their clothes a lot more frequent than men on true. average. Yeah. And uh, even my girlfriend donates clothes maybe more than twice a year. Oh, really? I don't even donate any clothes because I wear clothes until it disintegrates on my body. (laughs) Yeah, me too. And then I no longer have it because it's it's done. I've been wearing the same clothes, like some of the same shirts for like 10 years, man. Dude, I've worn a shirt for so long that the cotton started to look like leather where my armpits were. (laughs) And that's how I knew it was time to time to part ways (laughs) with that. That's funny. No, but I think the key the key here is it, if it's stained or if it has a hole in it, it's time to let it go. Yeah. No, I, any other reason and honestly just keep it. I know. Well, that's that's the problem, dude. I I, sw- I sweat so much, man, so like eventually yeah, my shirts will get sweat the sweat stains on the armpits. And, but uh oh, I I love some of cuz but the only problem is some of my shirts, man. A lot of my shirts, I've gotten them from places around the world that I've been. Uh like destination shirts. Yeah, well, the shirt you got now—it's Hard Rock. Yeah, this is a uh, Wrocław. That's in in Poland, one of the cities I visited. Nice. Right? So, did um, you get that one recently? Yeah, just just like a couple weeks ago when I was there. Um, uh, uh, that was that was the the city where I told you about the the nightclub where like all the girls were like eighteen, nineteen. Uh, that was that city right there, but uh, in the hip hop club, but. Um, no, dude, I got like I got like four new shirts when I when I went over there, all from Hard Rocks or Quicksilver or something, like that one over there on the right. That's Quicksilver Warsaw, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. So, see, I I have attachments to my shirts because I it's I get them from all around the world, so I don't want to let them go, even if they have big sweat stains and holes and shit. Yeah, it's like a little but memory. I know. So, I you know my mom was telling me I gotta I gotta retire some of these, so I'm like. Mom, I'm not going to donate them or throw them away. I'm going to frame them. I'm going to frame them and put them up on the wall somewhere. You can remember your trip. Exactly, right? In that sense. Yeah, I mean, that's a different Yeah, that's a different story. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, but uh, mm. well, Valley, Valley Village is great, man. Yeah, I know. I had a fun time. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, wow, we've been going at this for a while now. Yeah, uh, no, it's been a while. This is actually the longest episode I've ever done. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost an hour and a half really i nice, mean nice. yeah uh so i mean after a little editing my shape a little a couple a couple minutes a little probably a lot <laughs> well no i mean because honestly uh there's not really much editing to do um true uh because we've kind of been on topic and talking this whole time so that was nice but, man um, yeah. I, I didn't know what to expect this is quite a nice 
Yeah. Honestly, I think I think even if you weren't recording, it'd be probably interesting to have a conversation with someone mm-hmm. with this exact setup because I think so. I think it changes. You know, when you know people are listening, mm-hmm. your personality changes. Yeah, totally. Right? And then like you're more aware of what you're saying. You're more aware of how you're being viewed. Mm-hmm. So even if you weren't recording, it'd be definitely interesting to put someone in front of a mic. Oh yeah, totally. Right. I'm just I mean, having this setting. I mean, I've I've seen how uh, people have changed in front of the microphone uh, yeah. sometimes, you know. But but I think uh, I think the best is just to be natural, right? I mean, yep. and, and I and at least because the people that are that have been on the show uh, uh, so far, you know, I've I know them personally. Uh, like you, like you as well. So we can actually just have natural conversations about things, right? And mm. um, yeah, this was good, man. This was I, I had fun. And Thank I, you. I think uh, we might do one with uh, with you and Jeremy and me all together, a three a three way, a threesome. A threesome yeah, episode. man. Yeah, yeah, and like we gotta we gotta figure something out. I know this. Uh, you know, all of these when it comes to being creative and and figuring out like this whole prop thing, it's like it's hit or miss. Mm-hmm. But you keep building on it. You keep doing something different, and eventually, you you come across something unique, and it takes off. Yeah, man. and then that that's that's what makes it special. Of course, to, right? So, yeah, it would be interesting to have a podcast with some video. I think that if we're gonna do a, a three, uh, us three, maybe uh, one of us can uh, you know do the editing on the video or. I mean, honestly, honestly, I was considering filming this episode. Um, it's just uh, I didn't uh, set up my cameras or anything, and like I, they don't, I didn't know if they had any space on them at the mo- at at the at the moment as well. But uh, no, yeah, good, it, it would have been. I mean, also because you know I'm I'm deprived of furniture in this room. Like, <laughs> I don't know where where I'd put the cameras for good angles. You know, maybe right up there. Yeah, um, I mean, over here. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but then it. That takes a lot of editing with with the video for sure, but yep. uh, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, maybe for the next one with uh, you and Jeremy, maybe we could work something out for for some right. video. Um, yeah, because you know that you know this this podcast has a YouTube channel as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but uh, I haven't posted anything for like uh, like in nine months at least, man. Yeah, uh, since uh, early last year. But the episodes back then that I was doing were not super great, so. But well, the thing is, you got to keep man, there's just so much people out there, and there's so many people trying to make it with their creative endeavor. Mm. The probability is extremely low. Yeah. So, so your your best bet is to be a nut nutcase mm. and to do what you feel like and constantly look to do something different, and then eventually something's going to stick to the wall. Yeah. And then when it does, people are going to like it and they're not going to be able to get that from anyone else but you. Yeah. You know? And honestly, I can't say, I can't explain of a better example than hot ones, but hot ones, like no one can do hot ones, man. Yeah. Even though it's just eating chicken wings and interviewing people, you know, with spicy hot sauce. Yeah. The concept, I mean, like, I know. Very unique, very creative. And I'm sure when it was first spoken about, probably, probably people sounds are like, stupid. probably sounds stupid. Yeah. And, you know, probably, you know, everybody doubted the whole thing but mm. it was a hit and when it became a hit that's it i mean they they have market dominance no one's out there eating spicy chicken wings interviewing people yeah you know what i mean they got true. that unique unique content so <clears throat> yeah we got to do a, a little bit of more of that and i think this was actually pretty fucking funny yeah maybe this prop thing can be uh the staple on this show huh I think it's hilarious because there's yeah. there's a lot of things you could do with it, and I think it's the funniest part is just the improv of putting someone on the spot and making mm. them uncomfortable because that's when you get the funniest moments. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, thank thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, well, thanks for being here. And uh, speaking of hot ones, mm. uh, I what I do with every guest on the show is I at the end I go, you, I go, you know, just pretend, yo. Oh, this camera, this camera, this camera. Tell the people what you have going on. So here's your opportunity to promote yourself. What you got? Instagram? You got Facebook? Tell people. No, I, I don't have social media. What? Yes, oh. I do not. <laughs> oh man, so no, nothing no. to promote for yourself? Okay. Oh well, no, no. Just thanks for all, all you guys listening out here. Stay tuned to some more podcasts here for Misha. 
And I'm sure I'll see you guys around. Definitely will. Well, I guess uh, that wraps up another episode. I'm Misha, This is, and I'm here with Matthias. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, we'll see you later. Ciao.